My father, the greatest man I ever met, said to me before the 1989 tour, I said, son, is there anyone you can sit next to the, next to the plane? They can tell you all about the one percenters how to play in England. How do you play at Lords, eight foot slope, and how do why does the ball swing around so much in overcast conditions? How do you play the county match? I said, Dad, the best guy is Booney. He said, Well, sit next to him, have a beer, and drain him for every bit of knowledge you can. So I did. Two hours outside of Singapore. I've just finished my 25th can, and I'm as full as a fat lady sock. Oh, I'm absolutely pissed as a fart. So. I, I did, I had 25. The flight service director, God love her, picked me up and took me upstairs in the bubble, pissed as a fart, dropped me in this seat, empty seat in front of Bob Simpson, coach selector, <laughs> Laurie Saul, chairman of selectors manager. And I've passed out. But she realising that Alan, uh, that, uh, what, that David Boone's well on the way of beating Doug Walters, beating Doug Walters had 50 cans and Rob Marsh had 51 cans. So, the only I know about you people here, you can't sit in a you, you can't sit in a bar and drink cans with the same person for over 22 hours. You can't. But she realised it might have a roster system. So she brought up, said, right, Terry Alderman, you're a good conversationalist. You have three or four cans, and you go. And she gets been rotated. It's a very good word on this trip. And then Carl Rackman is good conversation. You come to have four or five. A B, you can have one. <laughs> Because you're a boring fucker, as you get. So, <laughs> Merv, you can come in for 12, and you finish off, and then Jeff Marshall will finish with six cans, and that will finish him off. Everything was going swimmingly. And of course, 30 minutes outside, we're about to land. Captain Biggles gets on. Ladies and gentlemen, please get the plane ready. We're about to go to Heathrow. We we'll land in Heathrow. And the flight service director's panicked. She's run upstairs, you can go into the cockpit. You could do that back in 1989. And she said, quote, um, you can't do it. Why is that? He said, he's on his 49th can. He's got no chance of beating the record. Two minutes later, Kenton Biggles got on there and said, ladies and gentlemen, I've just got some advice from Heathrow. We've got some um, traffic problems. So we're just gonna have to do loop the loop a little bit before we land in Heathrow. And of course, when we landed, this wealth of applause come up from downstairs. Oh, Booty, you're the king. Well done, Betsy. And like, he's just, Done thing. So, and Bob Simpson said to Laurie Saul, listen to the camaraderie of the boys downstairs. <laughs> Booney's won cards, 500. I won it in the 1964 tour and I had made the most runs. Booney's going to have a fantastic tour. This is a big omen for Booney. And I'm thinking, if he only knew. And then Captain Biggles gets on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heathrow. Six degrees outside, and I want to wish the Australian cricket team all the best because I know they'll do very well, because David Boone has just broken the record. 52 <laughs> cans from Sydney to London. Everyone has just gone off, except Bob Simpson, who's gone purple with rage. And I walked up to Simo and I said, Coach, how unprofessional is that? <laughs> of David Boone, I'd, I'd send him home, hold that three, won't be a problem. And he said to me, Dino, you were pissed before you landed in Singapore. Shut the shit up. So, <laughs> the difference between Booney and Rob Marsh and, uh, and Walters is Booney walked off the plane. Those two boys were carried off. And Booney picked up his coffin, which he did at the carousel. And I was told his, I was his roomie for the next two weeks. And he hopped on. The, now, we got to the Westbury Hotel. And, and the room is not much bigger than this room. There's a downstairs, the ballroom. And we have to introduce the 47th Australian cricket team to all the um, to all the uh, English press, the Levin tabloids and you know Sky and whatever. Why we got to do that, I don't know, but it's tradition. And we're wearing our green blazers. I'm still got a hangover and Booney smashed. <laughs> no one asked a question to David Boone or myself. Thank God. So when we walked off the the the, the dice, Laurie Saul said. Boys, one more job to do, then your night's free. We have to go across the road to the pub because we have to have one hour cocktail party with our major sponsors for the tour. And of course, our major sponsors in 1989 were Forex. And Booney's gone, oh great, feel like a beer. <laughs> he should be dead, like honestly. So we went across and I've had one pint across the road and I'm feeling pissed again, I'm gone. So I looked at Booney who looked Slightly dishevelled, 
But he goes, okay. And I said, Bernie, I'm going upstairs. Yeah, off you go, you weak so upset. So I went upstairs. I put my head down for one minute. Well, it felt like a minute. It was an hour. Phone call. Picked it up. Who was it? Paul from Concierge. You Dean Jones? Yeah. Um, you better come downstairs. You're rooming with Bernie, aren't you? I said, yeah, why is that? He said, he's just passed out in the foyer <laughs> of the hotel. And he's still wearing his green blazer. And press is starting to take photos. <laughs> so I've gone downstairs, and there he was. So I couldn't pick him up, so I got the porter's trolley. You didn't know this. So I got, this is my first day on tour. So I got the trolley, and I pressed the elevator to go up. Bing! Doors open. Who was the worst person <laughs> to walk out of the elevator? Bob Simpson. David. My room, tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, bring your passport. Shit. So we, I pushed him in, silence, going up the elevator. And Booney's sitting on the trolley. He's gone. He's not fucking happy, is he? Oh, God. <laughs> He's wrong. Next morning, we only got $18,000 for that tour. You take out $8,000 in tax. And David Boone was fined five thousand dollars already before the tour. Now that's eight thousand dollars technically, and I, the guy was struck on for cash at the end of it. I, but ironically, amazingly, the greatest one of the greatest days of my life. Three and a half months later, beefy bowled ball at Old Trafford, short of length on his hip, walked it, worked behind square for two, and David Boone scored the winning ashes for the first time in 50 years in 1989. It was the greatest day of my life. Did, what was his series like after drinking the 52 cans? Was he okay? 620. Man, he, he could not get out for the first month. <laughs> so the rest of us just thought, shit, we've all got to get on the forex. Have a go, I'm empty. We, he could not get out the first month. So that was the preparation. Man, proper preparation. I knew we were desperate for greatness. <laughs> 52 cans.